I know what you're thinking about. I know what you're thinking about work. I know what you're thinking about school. I know what you're thinking about all the time. Hello, everybody. This is Grendel Shear, and welcome to another episode of the Two Ring. Today, we're going to be covering using the N52TE with StarCraft II. Um, got four basic uh, things to cover in here. First is uh, grid key bindings. Uh, second is uh, control group key bindings. Uh, third is some gaps, places where the N52 and StarCraft II don't quite mesh up. Um, and then uh, the last issue is uh, sort of a Tempest Depot showing up on the Battle.net groups and that's uh, the forums and that's if uh, using N52 will get you banned uh, playing StarCraft II. So start off there with the uh, grid key bindings. Uh, now if you're using the default uh, options in here, uh, in the hotkeys area, Blizzard gave us the option to have several different key binding setups. Um, no, you can't have a custom key binding setup, and you can't change the key binding setups in here, which is sort of an issue for uh, uh, item number three there, places where they don't mesh up. But for the most part, uh, if you select the grid key binding setup, uh, what that does is it maps um, the command panel in game to the left side of the keyboard as a 5 by 3 grid. So you notice here, command button 00, zero which is the top left keyboard and, key and command button in game on the command panel is now mapped to Q regardless of what command that is. So whether you're looking at a hatchery, whether you're looking at a barracks, whether you're looking at a drone, uh, Templar, um, whatever, doesn't matter. That top left command value is going to be Q. Um, and this maps through so that it uses the top row on the keyboard for QWERT, QWERT, uh, uses the second row, AF, ASDFG, and then ZXCVB. Um, so this is really awesome because the M52 happens to be a 5x3 grid keyboard. Um, so you can throw on QWERT, ASDFG, ZXCVB, VB. B technically would have wound up down here, I'll get to that in a second. And so you get a total, uh, a direct map from the M52 to the command panel, regardless of what unit you're on, what building you're on, what race you're playing, uh, any of that. Uh, so you don't have to memorize, you know, is it Y for pylon or L for pylon? You just look at where the pylon is on the command map um, and press the corresponding position key on the M52, boom, you're building pylon, well, warping a pylon. Smooths out that learning curve tremendously. Um, and allows you to have one N52 map for all three races. Um, you can use this for your build phase, you can use this for your uh, uh, production phase, you can use this for uh, special abilities on your units, everything. Um, let's see, the rest of this map here. Uh, why don't I have B here? B on the command panel is almost always uh, stop or cancel, which is also escape which we have bound on the upper thumb button um, across the board. So there's no need for the B. And what that does leave us with is a, the ability to use this for red key map momentary. Um, let me show you the red key map and then I'll come back to this. Um, first, let me finish this map off. So D-pad, take off the di diagonals and leave the defaults. And this allows you to use the D-pad to, to pan around the map. Um, very useful. Uh, you don't have to scroll to the edge of the screen. Uh, leaving the action in order to move around. Um, if you just need to move over a little bit on the screen, just use the D-pad and your mouse just stays wherever, you know. If you had it in the center of the map, because that's where the action is, at the center of the screen, you can pan over, your mouse still is in the middle of the screen. So that's good there. Um, the red map is uh, control groups, I'll get to that in a second, so you can switch between uh, maps using uh, scroll up and scroll down on, on the scroll wheel, which is very convenient, and also this red key map momentary to momentarily switch over to the red key map. So let's take a look at that. So uh, red key map um, is our control group bindings. Um, and this pretty much uses just a, a, a slightly modified version of um, my WoW profile. Uh, so you've got shift, control, alt, 1 through 3, 4 through 6, 7 through 9, uh, currently 0, which I'm actually going to change this up a little bit here, because, uh, and I'll show you that why in a second. Notice these still play and stay in place. This, uh, I'll get to in a second, still escape, still D-pad. Okay, 
Um, so you've got the ability to control your ten, um, your ten control groups. Uh, you can shift. Let's see here in the bindings. Okay, so control group recall, so you can go get to those groups. Hit it once and it pulls it up. Hit it a second time and your your screen moves to that unit. You all know that part. Uh, shift to append units to that group. Control to assign groups to the to that group. Um, alt obviously does nothing. Um, there is no alt number binding in the set, which brings us to places that things don't work out nice. Alt numpad, yes. Alt number, no. Um, we'll get to that next. Um, so this currently doesn't actually do anything, uh, and I'm hope hopeful for some future uh, use for it. Um, but you'll notice in blue mode, here I can temporarily toggle over to red. So if I'm here, I've got my commands, I'm issuing commands, I want to put something in a group, I can toggle over to red, select it, control one, and now it's in control group one, let go of it, and I'm back to commands. Unfortunately, because of how the M52 works, I can't in red mode make this a momentary toggle to blue because whenever you set a toggle, either momentary or permanent, it maps it to that button in all three modes. So if I change this to blue momentary in red, it'll change it to blue momentary in blue, overriding the red key map toggle. Um, what you can do though is have, yes, I want this to be a red key map toggle, and then in red, assign a single key value, because that doesn't override across all three modes, it only overrides in the current mode. So you can kind of get away with that. The trick with it, and the reason I just changed it, uh, if you noticed earlier, is, let's say I'm in blue mode, I hit the red key map, I have to keep this button pressed. Assuming, for instance, I had my hatchery bound on zero, I couldn't then hit zero, because I'm currently holding it down to get into red toggle mode. So, that's one of the reasons they write, write it across all three modes, is because you can't then change it. You can't use that button in the, in the mode that you're toggled to, because you're holding it to get into that mode. Um, so that's why I, I moved zero up here to this button instead. Um, so I've got to find another use for this. Uh, it's useful in red mode, um, but I can't use it if I'm toggled from blue. And I can't, unfortunately, put a blue toggle mode here in red. So that's a that's an N52 problem. That's not a StarCraft II problem. Um, you'll notice here I've got T in, on here. If you select a unit, uh, the, the standard five commands that pops up on the command panel in that position on the command panel is attack, which if you're using the grid is QWERT on the bindings. And so you can hit select group T and then left click a position on the map. And the nice thing with this one versus just right clicking, you know, selecting a group and then right clicking somewhere on the map. Um, if you just right click on the map, they'll walk there and they will not defend themselves on the way, regardless of what's happening to them. Uh, obviously, you know, you could just come back and, you know, say, hey, give me select group one, drop off, and go over here. But I find that whenever I'm in combat mode, I actually switch over to red and I'm using this. So, <coughs> for multiple groups, go attack this position. Um, so, originally I was playing with um, red map and then a toggle to blue for issuing commands. I don't know. I haven't quite... I'm not sure which way I want to have it. Do I want to play in red and toggle to blue or play in blue and toggle to red? Um, still figuring that out. Um, play test it and let me know what you think. So, the issue of gaps between the two. Um, in So, f for instance, I have nothing on green here. And the reason I have nothing on green here is because I'm not quite sure what to put on it. Uh, in these key bindings over here, you can't change them, right? So as much as I might say want to put... Um, uh, here we go, heroes. I might, for instance, want to put hero selection as alt 1 through 9. Unfortunately, I can't. I have to use F2 through F8. I can't change these key bindings in StarCraft 2. I have to use them. So I could put them on the green map, um, which seems a kind of a waste of a map. Um, I could put, for instance, uh, numpad on green, along with shift control and alt, and so I could use alt 
you know, the numpads for inventory use, and alt numpads for this in the green, and that would be more of a use of that map. That's a place where it's kind of a nuisance. It would be nice if I could rebind some of these bindings in StarCraft II to be to better fit with some of the way the M52 behaves. Unfortunately, can't at this point. Which brings us to, can you get banned for using the M52 uh, in playing StarCraft II? And that's exactly one of the issues uh, that gets raised, is because in the user license agreement in the terms of service, you cannot use a third-party program that changes the key bindings in StarCraft II. And what they're specifically saying is you can't use a, an outside program that would come in here and say, hey, make hero control, alt, one through nine. Can't do that. Um, so that part would get you banned. However, using the software that's, you know, the Razer software that's associated with the Belkin to bind the StarCraft II bindings onto the M52, that's totally acceptable. So using the M52 TE, the G13, the programmable mouse, programmable keyboard, even the Windows Live uh, gamepad if you wanted to, all of those things, because all you're doing is mapping the existing key bindings in StarCraft II to a different physical object, that's totally acceptable. So no, using the M52 by itself will not get you banned. Using software that changes the key bindings in StarCraft II will get you banned. So the secondary issue is then macros. Ah, oh, but the M52 has macros, and I could use macros, and that could, you know, that's technically not allowable. Okay, so here's the deal with macros. Blizzard's philosophy with macros is one key button, or one button press, one command. So, for instance, one of the, the issues in the Battle.net forums is uh, being able to use a macro to script out uh, using a queen's spawn larva ability. Uh, because normally in order to do that you have to select your queen, you have to select the, the spawn larva ability, and then you have to click on a hatchery, which can be a bit of a hassle if they're like not standing next to each other. Um, it's really a nuisance when your hatchery gets up and walks away. So you could script that out. Um, that would violate the term, uh, the user li uh, I guess the terms of use, um, because you're pressing one button and it's issuing three commands. That violates their philosophy on how you play. If you had a stepwise macro where every time you pressed it, it issued one of those commands, so you had to press the button and it selected your queen, select the button and it picked up the spawn larva ability, press it a third time and it selected your hatchery, and so the, she goes over and throws it on, the on your hatchery, that would be allowable because you're pressing the button three times to issue three commands. Um, so it's macros that'll get you banned, scripting macros specifically that'll get you banned, not mac using macros specifically on the devices. Um, so no, using the F52 again, and even the F52's macros again, will not get you banned as long as you're not scripting commands. Um, that you can do on any device, so it's not the F52 specifically. It's just don't script macros. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, the profile for StarCraft II and also my WoW profile are available on uh, Mediafile.com, uh, and I'll have a link to the download for that uh, up here on screen. And it's also in my comments on my channel, The Two Ring. And uh, like that, if you've got any ideas on how to improve this profile, because I'm still fiddling with it, please um, drop me a, a comment on this video or send me a, a, an email via YouTube and let me know. Um, all right, um, that's all I got today. Um, yes, I'm still working on WoW profiles, and I need actually want to go back and redo all my original how to set up the M52s because they're all outdated and low res. So that's hopefully this fall, but currently I'm grinding out bucket list stuff before Cataclysm drops. Um, and yes, I, I will be at BlizzCon. Other than that, happy hunting and fair winds. Grandolch out.